So today I want to talk to you about defeating the strategies of the enemy. One of the greatest battles that we've ever seen in scripture, and we all know it, believers, non-believers, they know this story about David and Goliath. It's the greatest battle that's ever been talked about in the history of the world. How a young man can defeat a champion warrior that was definitely way bigger than him, it's more experienced with than him, but somehow he wins the battle. What God began to show me is that we're in this same season and we're in the same exact war. The Philistines have declared war on the church and the world. And he's come with specific strategies. And if we could know the strategies, we could overcome the strategies. You know, in, in Ephesians 6.10, it talks about a final word. Be strong in the Lord and, the, and his mighty power. Put on God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. We have to understand not only are we in a battle, we're fighting against strategy. The devil's not coming against us with just, with, with just ideas. It's a plan. It's a strategy. And if we could find out what the strategy is, there's no way that he could defeat us. So let's look at the beginning of the story, how this war begins. We know how it ends where David kills Goliath, but rarely do we look at the strategy of the Philistines. In 1 Samuel 17, 1, it says this, the Philistines now mustered their army for battle and camped between Soko in Judah and Ezekah in Ephesus, the mean. We're going to stop there. Is that the Philistines come and they camp out in a specific place in Judah. Strategy number one is that the enemy wants to shut down true praise. Out of all the places that the Philistines could have camped out, they camped out in Judah, the place of praise. They knew if they could shut down the praise, they could set, shut down the supply, shut down the help. Understand this, where there's no praise, there's no connection to God. So the enemy has strategically attacked places that were strongholds of praise and replaced it with Philistine morals and values. Now, the word Philistine is an interesting word. And if you look up the word Philistine, you must think, man, what, what does this mean? All it means, real simple, it means immigrant. A person who comes into a country to take permanent residence. All this means is that when the enemy's trying to take over territory, he's taking territory that's not his. But he's not coming just to take to over territory. He's coming to take over territory and own it permanently and establish his values, his messages, and his culture. The Philistine spirit is there to take over culture, is there to take over churches, is there to take over the content. Is there to take over the narratives for good. This battle that we're in right now, either we win this battle or lose it. Understand, you could win or lose a battle. So it's just going to be a win. It's not going to be a win if we don't follow instructions. God told Joshua, meditate on, on the instructions that I've given you. Meditate on day and night. Be careful to observe everything written in it so that you may be prosperous and successful in everything you do. What he's saying is every battle comes with instructions and the instructions won't be easy, but if we'll follow the instructions, we'll get the victory. Is there anybody here 
that's tired, called, tired of just doing church as usual. We're going around in circles, going nowhere. But God is saying, we're not going in circles anymore. I'm going to give specific instructions. We're going to go to war. Your part is to follow what I'm telling you, and then I'll do the miracles. I guarantee you, if you follow my lead, there's a victory in this season as well. Philistines. Now they picked a fight. They picked a fight against the Israelites. Now the word Israelite just means God prevails. Powerful name. God didn't just give them any name. It's really, if there was a fight and you just had to go by the names, you would know who's going to win. The immigrants. First, God prevails. I'm going where God prevails. The enemy's responsibility and job is to make you forget how powerful you are. We're in a time right now that the enemy, the Philistine spirit, what it does, it redefines everything God's already defined. When Goliath came, interesting, his most powerful weapon was not his sword and his javelin because we know in the fight he never used it. He had a coat of mail that he couldn't get arrows through. He had a, a javelin. He had a sword. He had a helmet. He had an armor bearer that stood before him with a bronze shield. He was nine feet tall. Huge guy. But what does he use in his first attempt to destroy the Israelites. He comes with messages. Just words. Content. And the first thing that he does, he redefines what God has already defined. And what he does, he tells Israel, the Israelites, this is who you are. I, he goes, this is who I am. I'm a champion Philistine warrior. Just so you know, I am powerful. I've been trained for this. I've been in battle after battle. This is who I'm. So what the enemy does, he magnifies his agenda. And we're living in a time where we've never seen the magnification of a demonic agenda as strong as it is today. And there's no coincidence. It's the same spirit of Philistine that's attacking us right now. But there's a group of people that are saying, I'm a praiser. I'm not getting discouraged. I'm not losing my identity in this season. I know who I am. Is there anybody here that has the spirit of David, not the spirit of Saul, not the spirit of fear, but the spirit of confidence? So this is what Goliath does. Goliath says this, I'm a champion warrior, and you, this is who you are, you're only a servant of Saul. Just words, words. They gobbled it up. Oh yeah, we're only servants of Saul. The spirit of intimidation began to deceive them of who they were. Some of us right now are buckling to the intimidation of the enemy and you're becoming what he's saying you are. Our generation is repeating what the devil says they are. Because we've forgotten who we are. They should have been saying, no, 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 hold on. We are not just only the servants of Saul. Do you know what our name represents? We represent, this is who we are. God prevails. We know who you are. You're trying to come into a land that's not yours. And we serve God. This is our identity. We win. But once they heard that they were just servants of Saul, this is what happens. They stayed quiet. Be careful that you're not so respectful. You've lost your purpose. Some of us respect government. You respect, you respect people's opinion more than you respect what God's telling you to do. There has to be a time in your life that it doesn't matter the whole culture. It's not saying what you're saying, that you get back to what God originally said in his word. And you say, no, 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 no. This is what God says. 
And God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's not changed his word. He's not changed his identity. He's not changed his purpose. We serve a holy God. Come on, give God some praise if you know that God prevails. See, so want to shut down the praise. Camp out in Judah. I wonder how many devils are camping out in our churches today. There's no true worship happening anymore. COVID conquered them. See, understand there was laws that were put in motion here in California, crazy. Like, I couldn't believe it. Like, I really couldn't believe it. Is this how bold the devil's getting now? In March, 9, March 19, 2020, Governor Newsom issued an executive order and public health order that directed all Californians to stay home except to, go, to do an essential job or to shop for essential needs which includes total prohibition on religious worship services. Religious, religious worship services became illegal. Does that sound like the Philistine spirit trying to shut down the praise? Because if I could shut down the praise, I shut down the connection, I shut down the power, and then we make this a human fight. What we've done is make our churches fleshly, trying to reach fleshly people. Your church might be full of flesh, but it'll never be full of the power of God's presence. Because God is looking for some worshipers, some praisers that worship him and praise him in spirit and in truth. You can't, you could lock me up, but you can't stop my praise. And if you can't stop my praise, you can't stop a miracle and you can't stop the victory. The enemy knows if I could shut down their praise, I shut down their power sword. But it went further. which includes a total prohibition. Not on marijuana, but on the church. Not on vandalizing our cities, but the church. Total, pro total prohibition on religious services. This is surreal. This is the spirit of Philistine. Regardless of the number attending or whether social distancing or personal hygiene practices were followed, including attendance at in-home worship services. So you can't worship in the church and you can't worship at home either. It's against the law. What generation can the devil speak boldly like that but this generation? The devil strategically knows the church is asleep and they're fleshly. This is a time. But I thank God the majority might be asleep and the majority might be fleshly. But all God needs is one praise and worshiper to turn the battle around. Come on, God didn't need the whole army. He just needed one or two people that said, God, if you want to do something, just do it for me. God says, that's all I needed was one David to turn the battle around. Come on, who here is saying, God, use me like you used David in these last days. They're not going to shut my praise down. They're not going to shut my home down. There's one thing I won't do. I will not bow to the spirit of Philistine. Understand this, nowhere in the United States was it said, but only here. So that's why this is so important, because God says the battle started here, so we're going to go ahead and respond the battle here. What's happening today, we're drawing a line. The Bible says that they met in a place called Ephes Damin. And you know what that means? It's the, it's, it's the bloodline. Where you where, where, see, the enemy put, put a line down, we put a line down. And you say, you've crossed the line. 
And this group right here believes in the blood of Jesus. You know what I mean? You know what we mean? We got a victory already. The blood, come on, the bloodline. You can't cross this line because this line, you cross it, you're dead. You've come too far. Let's go ahead and fight right now. It's time to fight. And this we know that God will prevail. Come on, this is going all throughout the United States of America. The Holy Spirit is speaking and the Holy Spirit says, come on, I don't care how big the giant is and I don't care what strategy they put in. They're not going to shut down my praise. They're not going to shut down my church. If you want a war, you got a war. Three. It didn't stop there. Like if these weren't enough words, how quickly we bow down. When COVID hit, this is what I said. COVID's going to come and it's going to go. But understand there's a strategy to it. The purpose of the spirit of COVID, that's what it is, it's demon was to come in to the church, make it submit to its authority, to gain authority over the church forever. Because this spirit of the Philistine is not a visited spirit. It wants to be a permanent spirit. We're in a time right now, if we don't fight this spirit, our nation will never be the same again, and it will never change. This is the battle of all battles that we're in right now, the same spirit of the Philistine has come back to this season and we're believing as a church that same results that happened then is going to be the same results that are going to happen now. Are there any praisers in the house? You can't shut me down. God is building you with confidence right now. Not confidence in your ability, but confidence in your God again. Not confidence in your methods, not confidence in your flesh, not confidence in your talent, but confidence in your God. You're only going to get this victory through the power of God in your life. Come on. I want to believe we serve a power for God. God will prevail. I wish it ended right there, but it did it. This is what the governor said. The governor said this. Does not consider religious services essential. You're only Saul's servant. You're not essential. You're right, we're not. You didn't realize that when you agreed with the spirit, you were allowing the spirit to rule you. You're not essential. So people cannot, look at this. So people, this, this, this is crazy. So people cannot leave their homes to go to church or to other Bible studies, to other home Bible studies. You can't do that either. You can't teach the word. You can't go to church. And you can't go to another house either. This is a literal laws against praise. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Have we become numb to our culture? Have we become numb to the Philistine message? That the Philistine message has been so loud and so consistent. Could it be that you're agreeing with the Philistine message and not know it? It got worse. It is also indicated that religious worship services would only be permitted after a county public health department department's approval of religious services. So, okay, so now what we want you to do, before you open up your church again, please come to us and let us give you permission whether you can praise or worship or not. Because if you come to us and you submit to that from here on out, we own you. 
I'm telling right now, we need to rebuke the spirit that took over the spirit of Phyllisy. Someone's eyes are waking up right now, and you're wondering what happened after COVID. The anointing left your church. The church stopped growing, and God is saying, it's okay. I already know. I'm revealing the strategy so you can begin to overcome it. Right now, we're going to rebuke and resist and renounce the spirit of Philistine in our churches, in our lives, and we're going to get our identity back. God prevails. You get permission to open up your churches. We're the authority here, not God, not you. You got it? Okay, okay. Okay. We want to be compliant. We won't praise God. We won't have Bible studies. We'll stop witnessing. <laughs> Look at that. Now, this is crazy, Even, but this is, this is the craziest thing. It still gets crazier. Because if we do give you approval, you could meet, but while you can still attend in person, in person church services in California, you can't sing. You can't praise. I want to shut down the praise. Don't you know I'm a Philistine spirit? If I could shut down your praise, I could shut down your power. I could shut down a move of God. All I need to do is just shut down the praise and put in some fake praise. Understand, the enemy not just wants to shut down the praise. He wants to go ahead and take over and start a new culture. And this is what happened. The messaging of the Lord is now re been replaced by a Philistine message. And some of it is happening in our pulpits. It's no longer the message of the Lord. There's a false praise happening right now. And it's no wonder that worship teams are being invaded by a spirit of lust and a spirit of Philistine because this is what happens if I can shut down the worship team some of you guys need to watch out that you got people in your worship team they're good musicians but they're not true worshipers and they're stopping the move of God from having it in your church it's better than you have a rookie up there with the right heart because God will say I'll take a young man with a slingshot with no experience and I'll take the giant out we need some real people that worship God if it's just one person with a guitar that's a true worshiper we can attack that spirit and kick it out of our cities out of our families out of our kids give God some more praise we need to get some true worship back some of you pastors need to clean house you're not trusting God you're trusting your program but if our worship team doesn't sing good the people are gonna leave the people aren't there for your worship team. And if anybody leaves because of the worship team, it's flesh anyway. God is looking for some worshipers that worship God in spirit and in truth. We don't need people on the worship team that are in adultery. We don't need people on the worship team that aren't holy. We don't need people on the worship team that don't love the word of God. We don't need people on the worship team that they sing and they leave, but they sit down and begin to hear the word of God and be part of an army that's going to praise God and worship God. Give God just one more praise. One more praise. One more praise. One more praise. You're not going to shut down our praise. You understand the strategy? You're not going to shut us down. I don't care you're trying to be intimidated. We come with a different spirit. We don't have the spirit of Saul that's intimidated. We have the spirit of David. We're ready to go to war. Let me fight them. Let me go after them. I know no one else wants to fight this battle, but there's a group of us that are saying, God, put me in the game. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play today. God, is there anybody here that's ready to go in the arena? Even if it means persecution, even if it means you're canceled, even if it means you lose your job, come on, give God some praise. You're not going to intimidate me from worshiping my king because you're not my provider anyways. I serve a God that's Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. Watch me praise him. You know what I love about this morning? There's no time limit. Come on. We got to get rid of the spirit. 
Come on, that doesn't allow the spirit to move because we're so tight on our schedules. Holy Spirit, come on. You can't move. I'm telling you right now, we're in a place that every word that needs to be spoken needs to be spoken because this fire is starting right here, right now in California and the United States. Come on, throughout the world. Let's start a revival right now. Devil, Goliath. We're coming against you. We're going to cut your head off. Your form of communication is going to be cut. After this is all said and done, you're not just going to be hurt. You're going to be annihilated. You're going to be eliminated. Come on, God is ready to do the biggest turnaround you've ever seen. These are the people that turn the world upside down. These worshipers. Now, we're going to we're gonna bring it home. We just have to realize we're in a battle. We got to ignite your praise again. You need to come in the house of God not to be motivated. You need to come here on fire. Well, I didn't like the way the praise works. I didn't like that song. I wish they'd do another song. It's not for you. This is for him so he can move in your presence. This is not my move in your flesh. I like a little slower beat. I, I like a little, I like a little more rock and roll. I like a little more country. Ah. I like a little more gospel. I, I understand what you like, but this ain't your great, great 40 greatest hits. This is about you singing. When there is no musician and you're saying, I just don't sing here. I sing at home. Everywhere I go, I'm a praiser. Come on. I don't slip saying cuss words. I slip saying praises. All of a sudden, I'm in the DMV line. Hallelujah. I just praise you, Jesus. Oh, excuse me. God is good. I just hallelujah. Praise God. I thank you for saving me. I thank you. This come on. This is the DV line. Oh, I break. This is in my house. Thank you, Jesus. You're a good God. I'm not just a Sunday worshiper, but his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I worship God 24-7. It's not something I do part-time on Sunday morning. This is who I am. Praise is what I do. Okay. Why? I'm telling you, without the praise, there's no victory. God doesn't move through a whole bunch of dead people singing songs that can't wait till it's over. The reason you don't like to sing is because you're not, pra you're not a praiser. You were never like that with the worldly music. How come you're like that with the spiritual music? I'll tell you why. You're in the flesh. Okay, let's keep going. Why is praise so important? We have to decide that. Why would the enemy start off by camping out? And that word camp out, I, I, I got to say that. It's, it's a word to lay siege against, to abide and dwell in. So, it's to lay siege. It's a battle term. The word siege means the act or process of surrounding and attacking a fortified place in such a way to isolate it from help and supplies for the purpose of lessening the resistance of the defender and thereby, thereby making capture possible so it wasn't they were just capping out it was a siege we're going to surround and we're going to surround them from support and from help where there is no praise there is no heavenly access your resistance be strong in the lord and the power of his might Put on the full armor of God that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And without being strong in the Lord, come on, I don't care how good you preach. Stop depending on your talent. Stop depending on your tech. Come on, your gifts. Stop depending on your money. Stop depending on how nice things are. I'm not saying you shouldn't be, be talented. And I'm not saying you shouldn't use it for God. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be excellent. But God is saying, I'll use the excellence. But make sure that my presence is there first. Because you're going to be strong in the Lord 
Lord. And the only way you're going to be able to withstand these strategies is in the Lord and put it on the full armor of God. We need to bring our spiritual weapons out in these last days. And one of the greatest weapons that we'll ever have is a group of people that really praise God. Okay. Why is praise so important? Praise creates a place for God to inhabit. Crazy. When we really praise, God fills the place of praise with himself. With his joy, with his peace, we're trying to counsel what should be. The spirit of depression can't be in you when you have the spirit of praise. We're only depressed because we're empty. If we'll begin to praise, what comes with praise is the presence of God. What comes with praise is the joy of God. What comes with praise is the peace of God. What comes with praise, come on, it is the victory of God. What comes with praise is the fullness of God. What comes with praise is the healing power of God. What comes with praise is the supernatural power of God. What comes with praise is the provision of God. What comes with praise is the strength of God. If my people will begin to praise me, I will fill them with my praise. Presence. Give God one more praise. I'm looking for a place to inhabit. Number two, praise creates an atmosphere for a heaven invasion. Oh man, if we only understood this. It's not singing to him, but God will work powerfully through just a little hymn. He goes, just give me something to invade. I, I, I'm going to give you a silly example, but it's funny. I, I went bowling, midnight bowling. Has anybody ever done cosmic midnight bowling? The like disco lights all over the place, videos, and you're bowling. I was bowling for them. But and then I went to the DJ and I had the bowl listener to say, why don't we put on, you got a whole bunch of uh, like music here. Can we just put on some gospel music, some praise music? He goes, oh, no, I can't do that. I go, you can't do it. You're the DJ. You can do it. You're the DJ. And what I want to do is change the atmosphere so I could bowl a little better. That's kidding. Maybe it was. I'm, I need some supernatural help. This is what happened. He did it. And from that, from that hour on, it was just Christian music. He had all the songs. So he started praying, playing Kirk Frank. He started playing worship songs. It was just amazing. I started bowling strike up this trap. I go, hallelujah. <laughs> but there was a shift in the room. This is what happened. The bowling alley was no longer a bowling alley. The bowling alley was a place where God can evade. From that moment on, people started walking through the door that were backsliders. People started walking through the door that I've never seen for, for years. And they started work, coming into that bowling alley. And they were rededicating their lives to the Lord. People were getting saved in just those few minutes. God was saying, if you could just create an atmosphere where I can evade, I will turn the atmosphere around. I'll begin to put things in order. And God says, you can praise me everywhere. And everywhere you play, praise me, there will be an evasion of my power. Crazy. We're going to be strategic about this. In Acts 16, 25, around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing the hymns to God. Can you invade this prison? See, some of you guys are trying to complain yourself out of the prison. All you're doing is complaining, murmuring. And God is saying, if I could just make you a praiser, I'll fix everything on the outside. We're not going to fix this nation by trying to fix the nation, we're going to fix this nation when you get fixed. Stop trying to get, trying to get Philistines to act like Christians. It's time for Christians to act like Christians. Come on, you're the salt and light. Everything that's going bad, come on, it's our fault. 
Come on, we're the ones that let our, come on, our guard down. We're the ones that let this spirit come into our churches. And we began to, we fell asleep, but God is waking up. Come on, a, a spirit, come on, a David right now. And he said, we're no longer going to be asleep. I'm ready to invade Pomona. I'm ready to invade your house. I'm ready to invade the United States of America. Is there any praisers that will create an atmosphere that I can invade? But Lord, I don't like these chains. You know, that's not going to change nothing. It's not there. I feel like I'm a victim. I'm only here because I praise and worship God. And God says, that still will change nothing. Why don't you go ahead and praise me? Sing a little hymn in your darkest moment so I can invade your darkness with my light. So they began to praise him. You could lock me up. You could threaten me. But there's one thing you can't take from me. And that's my praise. And if you can't shut down my praise, you can't shut down my connection. Is there anybody here that's ready to create an atmosphere for God to begin to invade and put it back in order? Look what it says. They began to sing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly... I believe there's going to be something happening here. I feel like I, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to fight somebody. No, I've never been like that. Like, I'm ready to like, get in my face. I guarantee you. Knock you out. Sometimes you like, you feel the energy. Like, I'm ready. To... But it's spirit. Make sure we're staying in the spirit. It's not what you're being knocked out out there. But you got to understand, we have discernment that that whole energy is not to go back and gangbang. This whole energy is to go ahead and spiritually gangbang on the enemy. I, all I said, I'll come on, we used to say this. Do you know who you're messing with? You must not know who you're messing with. You must not know the backup. You don't know where I'm from. There's going to be a church, come on, that knows who they're from and who they belong to. They say you mess with the wrong people. We're not, come on, some wimpy believers. We're some true worshipers. We're some true praisers. Put, them in tr put us in trials. Put us in difficulties. And there's one thing that's going to come out of us. You squeeze us just like lemon. Lemonade comes out of lemons. Praise comes out of true believers squeeze us and the more you squeeze us the more hymns come out of us the more prayer comes out of us come on the more come on the more shouts that come out of us is there anybody here that doesn't allow the philistine spirit to make you a philistine but all it does it brings out your true identity and you say no there's nothing no weapon formed against me shall prosper Every tongue that rises against me, I condemn. Whatever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. You're not going to take my authority because you're dealing with a true praise and worshiper God. You're looking for one. They're right here in this tent. They're, now they're watching, and we're going to spread throughout the United States of America. We need a praise revival. Suddenly. Huh. Crazy. Through a hymn? There was a massive earthquake. Hymns? I thought that was outdated. Be careful. Don't underestimate the power of a hymn. One hymn cause an invasion how do we know you're a real worshiper you worship God in your toughest and darkest moments and when you begin to worship God in your toughest and darkest moments it sends a message all the way through hell. We tried to conquer this one. We tried to get this one to think that he was a victim. We tried to get them to go back to the crack and the heroin and the drinking. But it would be, but this one, it didn't work. It used to, it works on the majority of them. But this looks like it's one of those true praisers that, that worships God in spirit and in truth, in good times and in bad times, in mountaintops and valleys. They worship God in the prison. They praise God in the prison and they create atmospheres where the spirit of God invades. Now, this, check this out. We're... It shook and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. 
Why? Because once there's an invasion of heaven in the prison, everything that doesn't align with heaven has to align. You're trying to fix stuff that the, only the presence of God can fix. You need an invasion of God and he'll begin to put things in order. This is what, when this presence of God came in that there was an invasion of heaven on earth and it happened in a place where there was a bullseye because it was praise. Every time you begin to praise, you create a bullseye for the presence of God to land. God's looking for somewhere, somewhere to invade. So he, he says, you're praising me? Bullseye. Imagine heaven getting ready. There's someone praising me in a dungeon. And the, the spirit of God, the angels of God begin to say, we've been waiting for somebody like this. We we're waiting for a place to invade. And they went into that prison and shook the earth. But it was, and, and then the prison doors open up because in heaven, there are no prisoners. So anywhere there's a move of God, everything that's in bondage, everything that is closed doors. Some of you right now, you've been trying to open a door, but God is saying, if you'll praise me, I'll begin to open that door. I'll open doors that look that can be opened. God is ready to open doors of opportunity, open doors of blessing, open doors. Come on, all over the United States of America, because there's a group of people praising God. And then the chains fell off because in heaven, there are no prisoners. There is no one in bondage. Why don't we go ahead and get praise back in our homes? And your kids that are drug addicts, they're going to have to be set free. But from the power of the enemy, because where there's praise, there's order of heaven. Thy kingdom come on earth the way it is in heaven. One more praise. And we'll end it. We're going we're gonna to bring this down. One more thing about praise is very important. Praise causes the strategies of the enemy to backfire. At the very moment they began to sing and praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies and killed every one of them. After they destroyed the army of Seir, they began to attack each other. So when the army of Judah the army of praise arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness. All they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. God is saying, what I'm ready to do is going to be a total annihilation on hell. I think we've lost our expectation of what a real victory looks like. In order to defeat the Philistines, all God needed was just one praiser. There wasn't one in the whole army. The king wasn't a praiser. The people were praisers. The army were praisers. Every time Goliath spoke, they cowered down in fear. It's a spirit of intimidation. Some of us right now are scared to preach the whole gospel and the whole truth of God because you're scared of the repercussions. And God said, you're scared of the repercussions, you can't represent me in the battle fiend. This battle is not going to be won because you're raised and this battle is going to be won because you're a praiser. David comes in and he says, who is this? uncircumcised Philistine. First, first person ever say that. Who was this uncircumcised Philistine that's coming against the armies and the living God? Who do you think you are? You're a mere Philistine with no relationship with God. Don't you know who I serve? Don't you know the one I praise? You're not fighting with me. You're fighting against the armies of the living God. Who do you think you are coming here to try to intimidate me 
and get me down to cower down and get me to be filled with anxiety. No longer we allow, allow you to just do whatever you want because whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. We take authority over this. We redefine this. You're not a champion warrior. I don't even call you by name. I call you an uncircumcised Philistine. All you are is somebody that's trying to invade a territory that doesn't belong to you not here Saul let me throw down with him let me fight him I'll take him down God has delivered the lion and the bear with my hand into my hands and since he rescued me from that lion and bear that was just a warm-up for this come on come on this is just a warm-up for this giant everything that you've gone through it's just been a warm-up for this battle that you're in and God says I've not put you in a battle that you can't win you're prepared for this battle I'm calling you for this battle we're gonna win this battle is there anybody here that can declare a win father and just say this this battle is not mine this battle of the is the Lord and the see devil God's gonna give you into my hands he's my rescuer he's my deliverer is there anybody here that has the guts to declare it and if you say God is saying if you could praise me and you could declare it I'll invade it I'll be the God that you praise me as God is saying I need higher praise so I could do some higher things come on give God just one more praise just one praise just one worshiper just one person that knew God come on just one it didn't matter he was a boy but God says, I'll take the boy. I'll take the senior citizen. It has nothing to do with age. It has to do with praise. As soon as David began to praise, there was an invasion of God's ability in David. A little slingshot with five stones and he got a little boat. <laughs> Goliath shows up with his armor bearer with his big shield, coat of armor, javelins, swords, and David <laughs> with a slingshot. Five little stones. But I love, I love the picture. Goliath moves forward. As soon as he sees, David sees Goliath before, the Bible says that David and Wicked Brad, it's also okay, so we're going to do this now. Let's do this right now. And he didn't wait. See, some of you guys are waiting. And God says, stop waiting. Immediately start praising. Immediately start obeying. I'm ready to do something for people that are, come on. You can't say you're a praiser if God tells you to do something and you procrastinate. God is ready to do something and God needs you to move quick. took the stone out. David said, David and Goliath said, am I a dog that you're sending me a stick? And David says, you could call, you come with sword and jab and all this stuff, but I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. Like, you don't understand. Me against you is no match, but you against God is no match. I already know the setup here. It's not me against you. It's me and God against you. God's going to use a nobody like me with the talent I have. Okay, stop discounting me because all I need is for God to back me up. And if God backs me up, there's no devil in hell that can stop this move of God. Bam, bam, bam. He lets the stone go under the power of God. The odds in Las Vegas, David, I don't even know what the odds would be, but no one would be bet on David. Maybe no one's been betting on you your whole life. But God says, I use the unlikely, the least likely to do an amazing work. I just need someone that's ready and available. Come on, is there anybody ready and available? The scripture says, the stone went, but the Holy Spirit, GPS, with Holy Spirit velocity, it didn't hit Dave Goliath in his armor, in his helmet, 
it got through this, the shield bearer, armor bearer. It got through the coat of males. And it hit the only spot in his forehead that was open. Because this was a move of God. And what God's ready to do, he's going to get all the glory. And we're going to say, how'd you do it? He goes, all I needed was you to praise me and throw your little slingshot out there and let them know about me. I will do what you can't do. And the Bible says it sunk into his head. He fell down and David promised that he was going to cut off his head, but he didn't have a sword. And I don't think God showed David how he's going to cut off his head. He goes, just say what I tell you to say. We'll figure it out as we go. So he goes, uh, he knocked him down. He goes, oh yeah, I said I was going to cut off his head. Where's my sword? I don't have, oh, he has a sword. So the weapon that were formed against me are now backfiring on the enemy. So the same sword he was going to use against me, I'm telling you right now, the sword that the enemy is trying to use against me, it's going to turn on him and destroy him. Come on. The media is going to turn on them. Come on. It's all going to turn around. And he took out his sword and bam, cut off his head and say, now what? That same spirit that was trying to get us to run is now running from a group of people. Come on, there's going to be a turnaround. Get ready for demons to run when you show up as a true praiser. Give God one last prayer.